welcome or welcome back to a game of fangs and thorns my name's hannah and this is a reading vlog hopefully and this week's well it's monday morning which obviously is out of the norm for me anyway i normally start them after work but i'm not at work today and before anybody says anything no i'm not skiving i'm on holiday i've got the week off so we're just going to go to Kilda and hopefully I remember to take you guys along with me otherwise this will be a very short vlog but we're just getting ready to go and Aurelium does technically start tomorrow but I'm going to give myself a head start because I still have Druid Magic by C.S. Churton to read from July's TBR so that's moving on and then we have the big chunk that is the August TBR. So save on space and to be clever. I know me being clever. Who'd have thought it? But I have my Kindle packed away, ready to go with me. So I as Druid Magic by C.S. Churton is a Kindle Unlimited book. Don't really know much about it. It just sounded cool when I downloaded it. And then we have the vampire knitting club and i cannot remember who wrote that one but that is a cozy mystery series following a young girl who inherits a knitting shop from her grandmother and the grandmother is supposedly dead but she keeps throwing she keeps showing up and there's a vamp and as it says in the title there's a vampire knitting club who use the shop as their base i think i'm probably wrong and then we have the the last book I'm probably not going to get to reading, but it's on TBR for Kindle anyway, is Fourth Wing. And I cannot remember who wrote that, but it's like everywhere, so you probably know more about it than I do. But basically in that, we follow a young girl who has trained all her life to be a scribe, but her mother is the general in this war. And she has decided that no no child of mine will be a ma merely, merely a scribe. You are going to the Dragon Riders part of the campus. Which to me would be great. I love dragons. But it's kill or be killed. And she already has a target on her back because her mother is the general. Which gives her... Which doesn't give her as much of an advantage as you'd think and it means she has instant enemies so there's that and our main character is also disabled uh, she ha suffers with chronic pain and chronic dislocations which in our world to me it sounds like uh, hy hy joint hype mobility syndrome or elos danlos which will be interesting to read about in a fantasy setting and i've been hearing mixed things so Let's be honest, I'll read anything with dragons. And I tend to read highly if there's dragons. But I'm hearing mixed things because the initial TikTok buzz and just media push and global phenomenon that is Fourth Wing was all pleasant. It was a was positive reviews. But I have seen a couple of video thumbnails where they rate um where they don't rate it that highly. So I'm going in kind of middle of the road with that one and that's the only really one that has a massive buzz about it but i'm intrigued and in terms of audiobooks because i have gotten into them again i have about like two hours left of sorcery of thorns by margaret rogerson and that is a reread because i've read that story before but this is the first time i'm listening to it and i normally just sit with my headphones on and do the cross stitch so yes my headphones and the cross stitch are coming with me and we do have some activities planned but for the most part i'm hoping it's going to be chill but because every but because it's not that far, we're sort of stuck for the morning. We have to find something to do because we can't check in until fall. Uh, but I'm 
mean I could update the blanket. That wouldn't take too long and I don't need and this isn't coming with me so um but if you saw last week's vlog which went up yesterday uh, you'll know that I didn't I finished Poisoned by Jennifer Donnelly but didn't have a corpile score so I did that last night after I finished the um after I closed out that vlog so we gave it I think it ended up with a yeah, it ended up with a three star, which, upon reflection, is what I was thinking. It's a solid, solid uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves retelling. But I'll go more into it in the next instalment of Read Nine, whenever that is. Uh, so, yeah, Poisoned, in case you're interested in how long this is taking, is book three of nine for Read Nine. The last one was... You know, in the slayers, and because I finished two series, I could start a new one. <laughs> so, at the moment, because of that, I don't really know what to do with myself. Uh, I guess yeah, I'll probably just add the raw to you, the blanket. Um. I could just dig out my headphones and listen to sorcery phones while I do that, but that means unpacking to get to the headphones, and I don't really want to do that. So we'll just probably stick on. We'll find something to do. I'll probably be updating the blanket now that I've said it. So we made it to the cabin, and um, if you can hear the dishwasher, I'm... Sorry, but not sorry, we need to wash up after breakfast. But my mum and sister have gone for their walk, so I'm just chilling by myself. I have started Druid Magic by C.S. Churton, and I'm about 50% through, I think. And I am enjoying it. We follow Lissa, who has been at the start of the book has been rejected by three universities and then she's just getting really despondent about it and her dad agrees he pulls some strings and agrees for her to do her resets now what's interesting and what i'm liking is that this is british rather than american so our Celissa so is 18. she's not exactly naive um, she knows her way around things and she's got a good head on her shoulders and I don't know if you can hear it but we've got birds on so it's just perfect perfect vibes um, what was I saying oh yeah she's 18 and at the start like I say at the start of the book she's been um, declined rejected from another university and is just about and is resigned to resetting her her GCSEs or her A levels, probably A levels, but it doesn't really state that in the book. It's the summer holidays and she's just chilling in her room and she gets a letter from the Dragondale Academy of Druidic Magic. And at first, she thinks it's just a hoax from her sister. Um, but then when she's at her little grove area, like her little clearing in the park, she's transported to the actual school. So she suddenly realises it's not a prank. And she is way out of her depth, but she meets two lovely people, Sam and Kelsey. Now Kelsey has secrets of her own, and but we find out what they are a lot of ways into the book and she learns that not only is she a druid she's adopted and her parents didn't tell her and i think there's something bigger going on that we haven't quite touched upon in the storyline yet but this is the first of the series it doesn't fit well i wasn't intending on reading it for anything for um, Aurelium 
but it could fit for start a book at night and read a book in a different location so far because <laughs> I've read out there in here and in the bedroom so and I think that prompt's going to be a hard one to fulfill because I don't go anywhere <laughs> um, but I've just been reading this morning had a lovely breakfast of bacon and egg sandwich in the slow morning but I pulled out yes this came with me and I got some little needle minders from Maloka Designs. I just think they're so cute. So I'm probably just going to alternate between doing this. I did bring my headphones as well, but I don't know if I'm going to listen to an audiobook yet. But I'll be alternating between this and reading Druid Magic. So I may get some footage some b-roll footage later I just haven't decided what I'm actually doing today in to tell you that I finished a Druid Magic by C.S. Churton and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a quick read, enjoyable, it was a compulsively readable writing style. I didn't find it too, um, too hard to read or too grating. Sorry, I thought I didn't pack enough socks. Hang on, I just put me down. So I didn't find it too grating or anything like that. The characters were incredibly realistic and enjoyable. Um, I didn't guess the main villain, which is always a good thing. And at the same time, even though I didn't guess the main villain, the main villain made sense. I haven't brought my corpile journal, my book journal with me, so I can't give you a corpile score. But based on first impressions, I think I'll give this a 3.5 or 4. I guess it was enjoyable. I mean, I read it in just under a morning, pretty much. Um, but now, because it's about 10 to 11, just pop some socks on, pop some shoes on, find my jumper, and then go for a, a little walk. Um, I'll probably just go down and treat myself to something for lunch from the cafe, and maybe get some chocolate, but we shall see. And I did bring, I did show you before, but I've added a little bit up here to the cross stitch. Um, depending on how busy it is at the cafe, I may read something. I may start Vampire Knitting Club or Fourth Wing. Um, when it comes to Vampire Knitting Club, I do have the first three books on Kindle. And depending on how much I read, I may just read that. But what I'll probably do is I'll probably start fourth wing because I'm, let's be honest, I'm more excited about that one than the Vampire Knitting Club. So we shall just start that. I'll go for a wonder. Pop my shoes on, pop my jumper on, lock the door, grab my phone, grab my purse, grab my Kindle, and go in my bed.
essentially troll the insects and then they catch them all up and put them in the little basket and when they're in flight they actually feed themselves on the flying and their echo rotation sounds like a, a machine gun firing it's really really fast and rapid So it's Thursday, we have a break between activities and you'll have probably seen that there were some B-roll clips before this update. Uh, I'll just quickly explain them. I don't think I got any B-roll from the Osprey tour, but we did that yesterday tea time-ish. Um, we went out on Kilda Reservoir in the ferry and went to see some Ospreys. We learnt about them and it was very cool. Um, we did see, I think we saw the same one like a couple of times, but we did see them, so that was cool. And then we went on the bat safari, which I definitely got um, footage of because the clicking that you can hear, the noises that you can hear, are from the bat detectors that we got that we were provided with. Um, and basically, what they do is they take the echolocation clicks that the bats make. Um, which is very high frequency, very hard to hear. And then they convert it into a lower frequency that everyone can hear. And we just wandered around the woods, listening and seeing, listening for bats, and then we could see them and they were, yes, that was cool. And um, before that, we did also go to the bird of prey centre that's on site, which is quite small, but I didn't really get much footage of that. Um, and then this morning, we went paddleboarding now. I didn't manage to stand up, but I still enjoyed myself just paddling around on my knees. And at some point I did go onto my butt. I couldn't, I couldn't get back on the road because I've, um, at the beginning of the session, the instructor did have us fall, fall off the board to see, just to make sure that we could get back on. And I couldn't, so he had to help me back on the board. Which was fine. Um, and then I did try a couple of times to stand up. And I think right at the end I did manage for like three seconds. Uh, but my foot just, I don't know what it was, but my foot just wouldn't move to where I needed it to go. Um, so that was that. And then I can see we've got a little bit of a break before we have axe throwing tonight. And then we'll probably just go in the hot tub because tomorrow we check out. This is our last full day. Um, my mum and sister have gone to the shop on site to get some snacks uh, just for something for them to do really I'm taking that time to this time to update you guys uh, in terms of reading I finished Druid Magic I think I told you 
uh, then I wanted to read Fourth Wing, but they didn't download onto my Kindle, and I didn't want to use my phone. So I started reading The Vampire Knitting Club, and finished that. Uh, I think I'm going to give that three stars, because it feels the same as my other cosy mystery, which is the Tommy and Evelyn novels. Uh, but The Vampire Knitting Club by Nancy Warren is a cosy paranormal mystery where we follow Lucy, who inherits her grandmother's knitting shop, Cardinal Woolsey, and I absolutely adore that name, it's so funny, um, and that's in Oxford. But when she arrives, she, because when she arrives, she's just visiting her gran, she doesn't realise her gran has passed on. Uh, but then she realises that her gran has not passed on and has joined the ranks of the undead. Now, in walks Rafe, who is this charming, sophisticated, but deadly vampire, who she has a crush on. And then we also have the very mortal, very warm and loving Detective Ian. I think his surname was Chisholm. And they try to solve the murder of Lucy's gran. And then in the, and in the midst of that, Lucy discovers that she's a witch. And she ends up with a very cute familiar called Nix, who's a cute little black cat. I finished the first book in that, so I have the... I wasn't going to, but because I can't... I don't have Fourth Wing, I'm just going to read Volume 2 and then read Fourth Wing when I'm back home. Because I don't foresee this taking me long to read. But I enjoyed the Vampire Knitting Club. I'm going to give it three stars and then run run um through Corpel when I get home. Same with Druid Magic. Just to get that better less that better more objective view because right now I'm just going on feeling. And I feel good about them. I enjoyed them. They were fun. Um I think I enjoyed um Sorry, I have a hangnail. <laughs> I think I enjoyed the Vampire Knitting Club that little bit more than Druid Magic, just because Druid Magic is a high school setting. And I haven't been in high school for like 13 years. I'm not counting college, because that was more relaxed. But And I know it was meant to be a university, but it just felt high schooly. With the Vampire Knitting Club, um, Lucy is 27. She's a lot older, she's a bit more mature. And she's not as naive. But I did enjoy it. I'll probably be carrying on with both series because they're both on Kindle Unlimited. But we are just chilling. Um, I do have the telly on, but it's on mute. So. I've been working on cross stitch and this looks so good, especially when I look at it at an angle, like from far away, because when I'm close up, I just see the colours. I don't see the pattern emerging. So that's cool as well. So I'll see if I can get some footage of the axe throwing, but don't hold me to it. And I'll be okay, I think. I'll not injure anybody or myself. So, and then we're going back to the cafe restaurant for tea. I did end up having dinner there on Monday, no, Tuesday. It was very nice, but I didn't get much footage because I felt awkward being the only person there at the best of times. So I'm going to stop babbling and just chill. <coughs> I am back home after my little uh, holiday, it's Saturday, I actually got back yesterday, I just couldn't be bothered to pick up the camera, but um, I'll admit this now, Saturday, not much reading, yesterday, not much reading, so I did come home to my Sterling Ink monthly stickers and I have looked through these and they are gorgeous as always. I just haven't put them in the journal yet. 
and I've been I did work some more on the cross stitch. Yes, I did move the um hoop over so I could get to the corner. These are from I'm sure I've told you but these are from Maloka Designs. And they are minding my needle. But I've ran through Copel with Druid Magic and Vampire Knitting Club and they came out about what I thought they would. I uh, gave you a synopsis of what I thought about them when I was reading. But Druid Magic come out as a three star, which is about right. And Vampire Knitting Club came out as a four, which, yeah, <laughs> came sounds about right too. Uh, the book I started reading simply because Fourth Wing hadn't downloaded on my Kindle, which I should have checked beforehand. But uh, the one, the book I'm reading now is Stitches and Witches by Nancy Warren. This is the sequel to the, the Vampire Knitting Club, but it isn't, uh, but I think you can read them um, as standalones. But basically in this one, we are still following Lucy as she's trying to find her feet in the knitting shop. She's still not very good at knitting, but she hasn't given up yet. And the story opens with an older gentleman knocking on Lucy's door. Now he's not a knitter and he is single. Now he's there because he actually had a childhood sweetheart who was Miss Watts. Now Miss Watts and her sister, also Miss Watts, run the tea shop that is next door to Cardinal Wolsey's, which is the yarn shop. And he goes in, strikes up the relation. He pretty much picks up where he left off in terms of the relationship with Florence Watts and the sister Mary is not happy. Now, these two women, as far as we know so far, they are as thick as thieves. They run the tea shop together. They live together. They're both pretty much confirmed spinsters. But when, I think his name is Gerald. I want to say Gerald. When he turns back up on the scene, Florence changes. She gets her hair cut. She stops working so much in the tea shop, which is important because... One day, Lucy and the vampire, who sort of looks after her, her little vampire bodyguard who's mentioned in the synopsis, Rafe, they go for tea. Now, I haven't quite under worked out how Rafe can go about in the sunshine yet, but Lucy's gran can as well. I think it must just depend on how strong they are. But they go for tea. So Lucy can see how the matchmaking is going and basically so she can report back to her grandmother who is a bit of a gossip and and provides a bit more background to be honest. But when they are there, one of the guests at the tea shop, the general, is murdered. And there's poison either in the tea or in the scone. Uh, the guys are still trying to work out where exactly poison was they know he was killed by poison they just don't know how or why so there's the cozy element lucy is taking it among herself with her dead immortals her not so dead immortals to figure it out now uh, she has two admirers which i think is so cute she has rafe who kind of flirty kind of not flirty um, and then there's Ian, who's the detective, and he's more outwardly flirty. So we are seeing what comes next, and it's still just so funny. I just love the interactions that Lucy has with everybody. She's fired, and she's fired another assistant, but seems to have been fortunate enough to pick up a new one in the sense that the terrible waitress from the tea shop 
who mixed who mixed up everybody's orders, which is leading to the theory that maybe the general wasn't the intended target. Um, but she's now working at the knitting shop, so it's all worked out for her, okay, so far. I'm still interested to see what's happening next. Um, I think Saturday mornings have unofficially turned into a writer, turned into my writing days because I've wrote, hand wrote by the way, quite a bit of a little piece of magic. I think I'm building up to the midpoint. Um, I'm a pantser. I don't plot anything. I know roughly where I'm going, but then I just let the story evolve naturally and just go with the flow which makes editing an absolute pain but that's just the way i work so tomorrow i will probably be reading and editing fun sundays but still saturday i know i just updated you to give you my thoughts and feelings on the two books i read when i was on holiday but i just finished second book of the vampire knitting club which is stitches and witches and that got four stars i really really enjoyed reading these and uh, they don't give me a five star feeling but they are comfort there's something very cozy and comforting about lucy who is a novice witch living above a bunch of undead knitters solving mysteries solving murders there's just something there's just something cosy about it uh, and i just mentioned that they got the exact same i'm waiting on core pile but uh i didn't enjoy stitches and witches i think i enjoyed it more but the ending seemed a bit rushed and Lucy, our detective character, seemed to jump to a conclusion. I mean, she was right, but she jumped to that conclusion fairly quickly. And I think we miss, and I think the re as a reader, we missed that vital clue, that vital bit of thinking, that bit of information. Uh, but that being said, I don't read cosy mysteries to try and solve them. I think I just read them because I enjoy them and I find them very, very cosy, which I think is the point. But I know I'm guaranteed a happy ending at the end of them. Or at least with the ones that I read, I find, I try to find, I find that, you know, I get that happy ending. So... Out of the three books I've read this week so far, only one of them actually counted towards a William. And I don't think I'm going to start anything else tonight. Um, just because it's like eight o'clock and take I don't know if anybody else feel, finds this, but starting a new book is often worse than finishing a, a book because starting a new book you need to have you need to be able to think and to get that brain power into you know, who's who and what's what and it is like eight o'clock and i'm still getting my sleep schedule back on track ready for work on monday i think it's just a pen i found my i found my phone well it wasn't missing but i misplaced it but anywho, any hooters, I think I'm just going to catch up on some um, YouTube, maybe. I've started watching Peaky Blinders. I think I've watched the first series before, but I'm just watching it from the beginning again. I'm on episode three. Um, so I'll probably watch that. I don't think I'm going to crochet it the three rows i need onto the blanket um just because the wool and the hook are downstairs and i can't be bothered to go get them um so i do have my 
cross stitch though so I'll probably which I think is my new thing <laughs> my new obsession so I'll probably just work on that for a bit and then come back to you in the morning when I've started something new don't think it'll be fourth wing but I have now downloaded that onto my kindle I want to leave fourth wing for when I'm on holiday at the end of the month again uh, just because I know it's like a 500 page book and I'm going to be on a coach going from the northeast of England to Paris it's going to be a long journey so Hopefully the TBR go cards will be nice next month and give me some more ebooks. Uh, but I'm rambling. I'm going to, to cross stitch and watch videos and then chill. So it's now Sunday. I'm popping in to end the vlog. I have started Crowfall by Vashti Hardy. I'm only two chapters in but so far I'm enjoying it I'll give you a full synopsis and whatnot when I'm reading it more in next week's vlog so thank you for watching whatever this was and if you want um leave a comment down below tell me what you got up to this week what you're reading for William and I'll see you in the next one so give this video a like if you like it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see this, talk about these, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!